Good morning and welcome to Scarlet Thread Ministries Sunday morning service. Uh, this is uh, your assistant speaker, uh, the, and this morning my name is Glenn. Um, I want to say welcome and I want to say uh, I hope you all are having a blessed Sunday. The sun is out. We have a few clouds in the, in, in the sky, but that's just to keep us cool. God is a good God. And, and He is here to bless us and to keep us and watch over us. So, before we start the service this morning, I'd just like to open with a word of prayer and allow the Holy Spirit to take charge, to take responsibility for the service. And um, so I, I myself, I'm looking forward to hear what the Holy Spirit is saying to us today. So Heavenly Father, we just want to thank you for the opportunity to come before your people this morning. We want to, I want to thank you personally for bringing me safely to church, to, to the service. I want to thank you, O oh God, for your mercy and your grace. I want to thank you for your blessing. We want to thank you, O oh God, for, for, for keeping us, for watching over us in these perilous times. And Father, we ask you to take responsibility, take charge of this service. We invite your Holy Spirit to come out and, and to come in to take, uh, you, you know, to, 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 to say what he would like your people to say. Because I, I, I have nothing to say, but I, I would like you to speak to me as well, Father. And we thank you uh, uh, once again for your very presence here, because we could sense your presence during the time of fellowship that we had. So uh, at this point, we, we, we turn the service into your hands, Holy Spirit, and you say what you would have your servants say. Let your servant be here and let you uh, stand firm, Lord Jesus. This we ask in the name of Jesus the Christ, Son of the living God. Amen. So, um, today is Sunday the 28th. Uh, supposed to be a blessed day, a good day. Um, we, w we would also like to, 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 um, to say that, um, and you know, uh, I wish people happy independence because after today we won't be able to, we won't be have any service. We won't have any service until Independence Day, which is, um, which is, um, the 31st of, um, of August. We would be 60 years on that day. I think the country would be entitled to national insurance because that is the retirement age. So um, I hope the government give us something and say, listen, since we are 60 years old, we we'll start paying national insurance to everybody from now. Okay? That is not meant for, uh, to be a joke. I hope everybody receives um, national insurance. So this morning now, um, the title of my message is Listen to the Heart. Listen to the heart. Um, usually, uh, you know, we, we, uh, when we look at the heart, we would say, okay, the heart is, is, uh, is, the, is cardio, or cardia in, in the Greek. But today we want to speak a little bit about the heart and, and, and how can we listen to the heart. So the scripture verse today, where I'm starting is Matthew chapter 12 and verse 34, um, where Jesus was speaking to, the, to uh, you know, the people he was preaching. And... Um, and this is what he said. O gener and this is 34 as he continues. O generation of vipers, how can ye being evil speak good things? For out of the abundance of their heart, the mouth speaketh. Verse 35, um, Jesus went on to say, A good man out of the good treasure of, his, of the heart bringeth forth good things. And an evil man out of the evil treasure bringeth forth evil things. What was Jesus saying here? He was saying, um, he, he was speaking about, ab about the words that people speak. You, your words come from your heart. You know, a lot of people say, uh, oh, no, 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 um, um, you always speak the truth if you're drunk, or you speak the truth, uh, you know, uh, when I get caught, or things like that. But, uh, but, but I want to tell you that out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. And I, and I will attempt to prove that to you in, in a lot of different ways. Um, depending on how the Holy Spirit leads. So what is a good man? A good man is exceeding in respect, distinguished, or good. So out of a distinguished, um, a distinguished man, right? A distinguished man, um, out of the good treasure, uh, uh, you know, the place in which good things and precious things are collected and laid up. That is what Jesus means by treasure. A good man out of the good treasure of the heart. Now, and before I explain, I want to go. To, I want to explain what heart is. Heart is. The, it comes from a Hebrew word. Now, Jesus spoke Hebrew. The Greek word for heart is cardio or cardia. But Jesus spoke he spoke Hebrew. A lot of a, a lot of scholars believe that. Um, I'm based on some of the writings. Now, Hebrew. The word Hebrew heart comes from 
a, a, a Hebrew word, lebed. Now, lebed means um, the inner man, okay? Um, the center and seat of the spiritual life, the soul, right? The inner man. So you, the, the heart here is the inner man. And what happened is that God, um, Jesus was saying that out of your inner man, out of the seat of your emotions, out of the, 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 and the, 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 the treasures, the things you possess, where the, uh, you, you know, the things you hold sacred, the emotions and everything, those things, out of those things in the heart, your mouth speaks. So many times you would say things and you say, I really, I said something and I didn't mean it. Based on what the scripture said, some people say things um, out of the abundance of their heart. And, and what, what um, Jesus was saying, if your heart, if the treasure of your heart is evil, it's evil and it is, it is, it is not, um, um, it, if, if, the, if the treasure of your heart is evil, right? And that word is poneros, which means um, labors or annoyances or hardship, right? Um, new, new, uh, what happened to annoyances is really a nuisance or a thing that annoys someone. Poneros. Out of the things, out of the, uh, the things uh, you know, out of your annoyances or the annoyances of your heart, your mouth speaks. Now, why am I saying that? Why am I speaking about that um, this morning? Because a lot of people um, have been, you know, they, they, they have been misdiagnosing um, people's behavior. The reason why I'm saying that is your final people say, yeah, I believe she's like this. My blood don't take that person. I don't like this one. I don't like that one. And the reason for that is what the person, you know, half of the time you don't know the person, but it's really your perception of who that person is. Now, the Bible teaches that this, the, 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 the ability to discern comes through practice or training. It does not come through a gift or, or whatever it is. It comes through practice or it comes through training. And that is what um, the Bible says. The ability to discern comes from. There's also the gift of discernment. So what happened here uh, with us now is that people, through practicing to discern other people's heart, through their speech, through the, the, the words and their speak, um, they, 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 and they develop the ability to be accurate or 90% accurate, such as, you know, I know some people like that. So how do we judge somebody's heart? Or how do we determine what is in somebody's heart? If it is evil, if there are evil treasures there, or, or they are good treasures. You listen to what they say. You ever pay attention to people, every time you meet them, they're, 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 and they're kind of heavy, they're always gossiping and speaking about somebody else. They're always bad talking somebody. Well, then we know people like that, we, 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 are, we are able to determine what is in these people's heart. Some people are always making other people happy. They have something pleasant to say. They're paying you compliments. We know, based on the words they speak out of their mouth, that that came from their heart. Now, we are not foolish. We must, even a five-year-old child would know if somebody is lying or, or, or trying to um, make them feel good. So you, based on your ability to discern and to practice, you will be able to determine the treasures in some people's heart. Okay? Now, I'm going somewhere with this because I, I could feel the leading of the Holy Spirit in another area, you know, different to what it is I prepared here. Now, and this is verse, um, uh, this is, is, is Matthew I'm, I'm speaking about here, but what happened before Jesus said this on the monk, and, and this is from the sermon on the monk, what Jesus was saying, he was speaking about their heart, out of the abundance of the heart, but then he went on to the verses after and he spoke about your eyes. You see, if your eyes are blind, or, or your eyes are dim, or dark, the entire body is going to be dark. And what I've realized over the, oh, oh, um, over the years is that Jesus spoke about your heart, about the good treasures, about the terminal things, and then he went into the eyes. Okay? My whole message is messed up now. It's going all over the place. But why I'm saying that is because I'm seeing a lot of deception in the world today. People um, are being deceived because in their heart, they, and, they, you know, they, and they speak out of their heart, but the eyes now, if your heart is not um, secure, if, if you don't believe, you know the Bible says to believe with, with all of your heart. Now, if you don't believe and you are not convinced based on your heart, out of the treasures of your heart, and what happened there is that your eyes are going to be dim. And I'll show you why. Why Jesus said that. Now, as I said before, uh, this is not the, um, the message, but I could sense God taking me in another place. A area called deception. And it's an area that uh, I, I have an understanding of. And based on the scripture I'm reading here. 
Now, I was looking at Donald Trump issues on um, January 6th. And what happened is that on January 6th, we were looking at live, I saw it live, at people storming the, 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 um, the Senate a building in Washington. When I was looking at that now, I actually saw, and many of the, the whole world saw it um, live, where people were storming the building, they're marching up the place, they're looking to kill this one, that one, they want to string up the vice president, all these kind of things. We look at that, we saw it. What I'm hearing now is that some guy who is in the defense saying, if you look at that photograph, if you look at the photograph and you look at the picture, um, you would believe it's a normal day in the, in, the, in the Senate, in the U.S. Senate. You would believe it's a normal day. And I look at it and I, I remember I seen people storming, fighting, police, uh, even a policeman died. But this man saying it's a normal day, he say, if you didn't know it was January 6th, you would assume it's a normal day. I said, but I saw it. I saw it with my eyes. I saw these people storm the, 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 um, the Senate. I saw people start up um, and break up barriers. I saw people dressed with horns and different colors. But you are telling me that I am, I, I, I you know, if it, it didn't seem um, the way it looked. Which reminds me of a story, um, a movie we had a long ago where, um, it was a black and white movie, where did, and this woman, it had these two guys. And, and apparently in the, in the movie, and they were twins. So this guy now had gone to caught the woman, check, you know, checking the woman in a, a bedroom and thing. And then the other brother now, the twin, come and knock the door. When he hear him knock the door, he jump under the bed and hide. So when the twin come in and she talked to him and thing or whatever it is, the other brother, the twin, went back out the door and he came out from under the bed. And while he was coming out from under the bed now, the woman turned to him and said, but I just saw you walk out the door. And this is what the guy said to the woman, which is significant and has even happened today. He is telling her, would you believe your eyes or me? He's creating doubt. And what I'm seeing all over the, the world now and all over the place, and people are creating doubt. So if you, and that's why I, I believe, and Jesus was saying, you believe in your heart and confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, right? You shall be saved. Now what happened? If you believe in your heart, then people can't deceive you. And that's why he was talking about your eyes, Right? I believe, and Jesus was saying, you, may, you will see things. He spoke about deception in the last days. You will see things. You will see things actually happen. And people will try to convince you that that is not true. They will try to deceive you into believing that this never happened. But we know it happened. So that is why we have to guard our heart. We have to guard the treasures in our heart. We have to be very careful. We have to um, guard our faith. Because we, we will be seeing things. We are seeing things. And people try to convince us that that is not so. And as we say, the Holy Spirit only leading me because speaking about the heart, right? And speaking about your heart, you have to guard your heart. You have to ensure that the treasures, what, what type of treasures you have in your heart. Because you could have evil treasure in your heart. And then you're going to bring it forth. Now, in Genesis, in Genesis 6 and verse 5, right? This is what God was saying. And there's the Bible here. And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. So God saw that. God saw this going on, right? The, 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 he saw the, the, the wickedness in man was great, and every imagination and thoughts of his heart was only evil. So are we not seeing that today? I was um, speaking to Sarah on Wednesday, and, 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 and we were discussing uh, a book I'm of, 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 of reading called The Paradigm, The Blueprint. And this guy wrote a book called The Paradigm, The Blueprint. The Blueprint. And what he was saying is that when we, um, what happened in the Old Testament, and a lot of things that happened before is happening now. He spoke about um, apostasy, when Israel became apostate, how God moved. Now the world is, become, is, is becoming apostate, and God is... It's, it's, it's like a paradigm shift. He's speaking about um, leaders and things like that. And, and what is happening here now is that the same thing in Genesis, and what we are seeing people doing, and what is right in their own eyes, because there were no king in Israel. Same thing in the, in, the, in the world. People have no respect for leadership. So what we are seeing here now is that people are continually, right, and, and they're, the, the, the thoughts and intents of their heart is evil continually. And God is saying, um, and that happened in Genesis. But look at this. After Israel sin, right? After Israel sin, um, um, uh, and what happened 
Israel sin. I go in. I go in. I go in. I go in somewhere. Israel sin, right? Um. Israel sin. I'll see if I can find it. Israel sin, and um. What God, what, what God was doing after Israel sin, um, after Israel sin, God, 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 and this is Judges. This is Judges 10 and 16. Now, God have a heart too. God has a heart. And while I was doing this, I realized that God, um, God's heart, or the seat of, the, 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 the seat of God's heart is the Holy Spirit. One day we were discussing it and I realized, I said, you know, the, 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 God's heart is really his spirit. Because Jesus spoke about committing any sin except blaspheming the Holy Spirit. Then in the in the in the in the in the in the letters of Paul and, and um and in the New Testament they spoke about grieving the Holy Spirit. Now watch this. Judges chapter 10 and verse 6. This is Israel's sin. They went against God, they, 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 they backslide, they do everything, and that's where I read um Genesis um chapter 5 and verse 6 or 6 and 5 a little, a little while ago. Watch our judges. Chapter 10 and verse 16. Israel already went and they sinned. They turned their back on God. They start to serve Baal um, and that, you know, demons. They, they, and they put up all kind of, all, all kind of um, uh, altars and things. Came. And when they started to cry to God and things went bad with them, God tell them, go and cry to the same, and the God was praying to all the time. Go and cry to Baal. Go come to me. So God left them. And while they were suffering, this is what happened in Judges 10 and 16. And they put away the strange God. They said, God, look, we're sorry. So they put away the strange God. And they put away the strange gods from among them and served the Lord. And that's after they're going through pressure. And look at this. And his soul was grieved for the ministry of Israel. Now, his soul. Now, the, 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 the Jews, the Israelis use, or the Israelites use in, in Hebrew, they use soul and heart interchangeably, right? So God's soul was grieved. Now, I decided to study what word um, the, the Hebrew word for soul here, and it is nefesh. The Hebrew word they use for soul is nefesh, and when it's translated, it is breath. Same as pneuma, which means spirit or breath. So God's, God's spirit was grieved. His spirit, now if we, we grieve in our hearts, somebody die, we, we see, you know, we uh, angry at somebody and, 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 and you know somebody going away and we are alone. You break up in a relationship and things like that. You grieve, right? So you're really, and they say, I grieve and my heart is broken. I'm grieving. This is what they use interchangeably. So God's heart is his spirit. And when we sin, just like in the New Testament, the Old Testament too, God was grieved in his soul. The Bible says here, and, 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 God, and his soul was grieved for the misery of Israel. So God... God has a heart too, just like you. The, the only difference is God's heart is always good. God's heart is full of good treasures. God's soul is full of good treasures like us. That's why we have to guard against it. We have to ensure that, that, that we believe first. And, and, and once we ensure, a lot of us had experiences with Jesus Christ, being born again. Do you think that some of us, and I know for me, I know I was born again. I know how I was born again. I remember the day. Um, in, in, um, in, in the church, Indian Trail, my, my father-in-law, from the Scarlet Church, and the was preaching. I remember going up there, for no, you know, and weeping and crying, and I accepted Jesus Christ at Indian Trail. Church, a little church off of Indian Trail, he was preaching there on a Friday night, and I went down. I always said, I'm going to have to take it out of my pocket. I said, when I come out of church now, I will light up that, and I, and I go down. That, that I'm as get washing it, or whatever it is. My life changed totally. And that is what happened. I know in my heart, I believe in my heart, and I know for sure it is confirmed that I have accepted Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. I, have, I, I know for sure in my heart that I was born again. Right? Because old things were passed away, and behold, all things became new. I knew that in my heart. So if somebody tried to, 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 uh, to deceive me into believing something other than the Word of God, if somebody tried to show me something but with, with my eyes, Right? Uh, and I try to deceive me because I believe in my heart. Because of the, of, of, I guard my heart. Because of the treasures in my heart. That is where I put my, my, my and you know, I, I believe, um, and the Bible says, 
mind those things that are above and not the things that are below. Because I know um, that I mind the things that is above. I know that whatever I see going on here on earth, nobody could deceive me. Because I believe in my heart. And that is why I'm speaking about the heart. Listen to your heart. Make sure you understand. Make sure you establish every word in your heart. And don't, don't trust your sight because we walk by faith and not by sight. That, and that's why God said that. If you walk by sight now, you will be deceived. Right? You believe in your heart. Your faith is in your heart. Your faith is within. Your faith is in the inner man. Be careful. Be careful what you are seeing and be careful what you're looking for. You have to first believe in your heart and then and then your eyes are going to be bright and there will be no darkness within your body. Right? And that is what the Bible says. I'm not going to explain that. But what I'm saying, your eyes, people are using the sight to deceive you. But we who believe in Jesus Christ with our heart, nobody can deceive us because we walk not by sight, but we walk by faith. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. For by faith we believe that the words were framed by the word of God, so that the things that we see are not made of visible things, but invisible things. Right? It was spoken by the word of God, and we believe that. So people can say what they want. They can talk about, um, about evolution and all these kind of foolish strategies, um, 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 stories, and, 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 and things that come out. Now, that, can, that cannot deceive me, because the Bible, I know it's terrible, the Bible. Look at the Bible here. This is the undisputed word of God, and I believe that this is the truth, Right? I believe it is the truth. So if somebody comes with a different Bible or a different word or a different concept or a different idea of what creation is, they can't deceive me because I believe in my heart. I, I guard my heart, right? Just like God guards my heart and I, I receive assistance because God's heart is within me. If God's heart and soul is breath and human, God breathed life into me and I was born again. I accept Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit came to live in me. Then I, inside of me, possess the heart and soul of God because they say bread. Right? The Holy Spirit, if, is, is the, God is not grieved. Right? The Holy Spirit, um, and God, I've never seen earlier where God was grieved, but they said his soul was grieved. And the only way, the only time in the Bible that grief, grief and God, or being grieved and God, is mentioned both in the Old and New Testament is the Holy Spirit. So we know that we possess the soul, the heart of God in us once we are born again. And once we receive that, the Holy Spirit is going to bear witness with our spirit and then we will know the truth. But not by sight. The, the, and the way the technology going out, things change. And I stand up here in front of a green screen and I look like if it's behind a um, thing. The sight. I'm speaking to you, Right? We're switching things. You feel we're in a big studio and, and um, I'm preaching all over the, or, or I'm all over the place, but by sight, Photoshop. People photoshopping things now. You can't believe that. If somebody come and Photoshop something and you can't believe it, they don't walk by sight. Your Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit who dwells in you and your spirit must be a witness from now on. You have to keep that. Guard your heart. Listen to your heart. Don't walk by sight. You will be deceived. God spoke about being deceived in, the last, in these last days. Do not be deceived. Do not be deceived. Watch and pray. Watch and pray. You can't, he didn't say to watch alone. You have to watch and pray. Because the times we live in is perilous times. This is the end times. Right? Whether it's at the end times, um, I'm continuing for another 100 years or 200 or 300 years. This is, you are in the end times. Right? Some of us may not live to see the... the, the, the um, the, the, and the prophecies that is written in the book of Revelation and Daniel and in the Old Testament come to pass. But we believe it is going to come to pass because that word, this word, the word, the word of God, which is quick and true and sharper than a two-edged sword, piercing asunder to the division of bone and marrow, spirit and soul. This is the truth. This is life. That is the spoken word of God, right? And we have to believe that first in our heart, not by what we see, don't, 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 and don't play for what you see. Gamblers and people that say, I play for what I see, yes, because I don't know what's coming. We, who have the spirit of the living God dwelling in us, the heart and soul of God living in us, we don't play for what we see. We don't play for what we see. We play for what convicts us through the spirit of the living God. We, we play for what is written in this word. 
We play, right, for what is right and what is the truth. We play for what Jesus Christ said in his word. We play for, for, for the conviction that, 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 that we receive from the Holy Spirit. We play not for what we see, but for what we believe. We play for the, uh, what we believe, and we don't play for what we see or taking what I see in front. Many times we uh, could do things and we, uh, we receive offers. I received an offer from a guy, $50,000 to start a business with his wife. Not knowing he wanted a divorce, wife. $50,000, you come and say, Glenn, I can give you $50,000 to start this business, boy. Thing, thing, and your wife, um, my wife will go in business with you. So I turned to him now and I say, so if the business, not my personal a business, it was a separate a business, he wanted me to get involved because of my, um, because I have the, the technical expertise for that kind of business. It's, it's, it's hair coloring, right? It's a manufacturer hair color, which we, we, we don't do, so it's a new thing. So he was investing my money in the machine and, and everything, and he come to me and he said, Glenn, look, I'm giving you $50,000, boy. You go into that business with my wife and, 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 um, and all you open up. Look, I'm giving you a place to your parent. Equipment and everything I'm um, to use and thing. I have vans on the road, they will use it. I say, partner. So if the business bus and we ain't make uh, no money and, 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 and things like that is an investment. With my position with our 50 thousand, you say you had a sign, no, no check in, no partner. I, I mean I'm not receiving. You had to give me no receipt, I give you that money. Right? And if it, if the business bus, you don't have to pay back, boy. You don't have to pay me back. There ain't nothing I giving you the money. So I sit down and I pr I, I pray about that. I sense the conviction of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit said, no boy, don't get tired for that. I could have said, I'm playing for the $50,000. You might give me it, I don't have paid back. But the Spirit of the living God told me, don't do that. Right? Because I, I, could have, I, I wasn't playing by sight. I walk in according to the guidance of the Spirit of the living God. And the Spirit of the living God who dwells in me guards my heart. Right? Do you know that that guy was going to divorce his wife? And the 50000 would have been payment. And she have a business and he would not have had to share his business and his resources with her and they divorce. Right? Don't, you, you don't play for what you see. You wait and you guard your heart. You listen because the heart of God is within us through his Holy Spirit. Because if God's heart in the Old Testament, in, 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 in Judges 10 and 6 says that God's heart, God's heart was grieved. His soul, he was grieved in his soul. And the word soul here means bread, then it's obviously it's his Holy Spirit. Because in the New Testament, bread, pneuma, is, 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 is referred to the spirit. Man's spirit is pneuma as well too. Bread, right? So be very careful. Be very careful about, about, about who you put your trust in. Some men trust in chariots and some men tr and trust in horses. But I trust in the, in the, in the, in the living God. Look, I look some, some verses here with heart, right? Hebrews 8 and 10. For this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel. After those days, say the Lord, I will put my laws into their mind and write them on their hearts. And I will be to them a God and they shall be to me a people. Romans 10 and, and 9. If thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thine heart that God had raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Your heart. Acts 5 and 3. But Peter said to Ananias, Why hath Satan filled thine heart to lie to the Holy Ghost? And to keep back part of the price of the land. And a la and a nice honey wife, Satan, fill their heart. Be careful, guard your heart. Listen to your heart. What, is, what, what, what treasures you have in your heart? Is it good treasures so that you will speak life into people? Or is it bad, evil treasures that you will speak death into people? Be careful who you listen to. Colossians, right? 3 and 15. And let the peace of God rule in your hearts. To which also you are called in one body and be thankful. Let the peace, what, what comes from in your heart? Peace. Right? Peace. So if peace is in your heart, then you will speak peace. If peace is, is, is one of the treasures in your heart, then you will pursue peace. Seek peace and pursue it. You will speak peace in the people's life. And you will sow seeds of discord in people's life. Be careful of what treasure you have in your heart. People who sow seeds of discord, we could say, based on the word of God, that Treasure in their heart is, is, is division, is, is discord and thing. Because every time you hear them speak, it's discord. It's division, right? It's, it's the cause of uh, people to, to, to be, be at war with each other. Be careful who you listen to. And you who are speaking evil from your heart, check your heart. Do all the enemy and the devil to, to put things into your heart, right? So we're going on now, right? 
Revelation 2 and 23. I want you to listen to this. Revelation 2 and 23. This is Jesus speaking here about the churches. Hear what it is Jesus is saying. And I will kill her children with death. And all the churches shall know that I am he which search it, the reins and hearts. And I will give unto every one of you according to your works. This is Jesus speaking here. Notice, he say the reins and hearts. The reins there is really kidneys. And your heart is the inner man, as I was speaking, the kidney, which is deep inside. Why would the, um, Jesus use the word kidney? It came from Psalms chapter 7, verse 9. This is what God is saying here. Oh, let the wickedness of the wicked come to an end, but establish the just for the righteous. For the righteous, God tried the hearts and reigns. Both times, both in Acts, right? And both in, in, uh, in Revelation and in Psalms. God, in, psalm, in the psalm now, God try, uh, try, try there means search it, the same way and Jesus spoke about. Search it, you're searching, you're, you're trying, you're searching, you're testing, right? Your reins and your hearts. The psalm said it, Jesus said it in Revelation. What is he saying here? The reins is the kidney, the inner, the, and the inner, um, the innermost desires, um, the, and your thoughts. And that is what, the, 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 if you study Hebrew, you'll see where the Hebrews use um, certain things. Uh, I'm, I'm a poetry, so if they want to say, um, if they want to say something, they wouldn't really say, okay, I'm your inner man, or whatever it is, they, and they use poetry, and they use words to describe certain things, so you would know what, uh, what they're speaking about, they use, half of the time, they, and they use the exact words, so when they say, when the psalmist say kidneys and your heart, he was speaking about your innermost thoughts, your desire, the kidney, that's the word there, same thing Jesus was saying, I, right? Search the kidney, the, the, the innermost thoughts, and the, the inner man, and I will give unto every one of you according to your works. Whatever you have hide inside here, if it's evil, what is going to happen is that Jesus is going to test it in you. He will search, he will test, he will try. He knows what you have hidden inside of you. You could fool man, but you can't fool God. Right? I want to welcome Alex and Jocelyn to the service this morning. They're late. I don't know where they went. Alexander Jocelyn just walking. So welcome um, to the service, you too. So as I was saying, Jesus will try your hearts. Don't think that you hide anything inside that God ain't know about. Because in the psalm, um, the psalmist was saying that God established the just. And he let the wickedness of the wicked come to an end. For the righteousness, the righteous God tried the hearts and reins. The innermost thoughts, God knows your, your, your thoughts. The Spirit searches the deep things in man and know the, 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 the thoughts and intents of the man's heart. The Word of God as well too. Be careful. Guard your heart. Be careful of what you have in your heart. If you have evil treasure in your heart, it will come out through your mouth. Right? If you have good treasures, it will come out through your mouth. We will, we will judge by the things you speak, by, by the fruits of your words, the fruits of your mouth. Because out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speak it, right? So, and, and, um, th and this morning, I just want to thank um, you all for at least um, spending a 30 seconds to listen to me for those of you who's trolling. I want to say that this word is very important because I sense and I'm seeing. I'm uh, 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 using Trump again. It's not because I have anything to do with politics, but I'm, uh, I, 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 I was looking at the, at the deception there. Now watch this. You had Obama inauguration. You had Trump inauguration. Trump say, Trump and his people say they have never seen so much people in an inauguration. It's the biggest um, crowd they ever seen in an inauguration. So what happened now? They put two pictures side by side of two inaugurations. One is Obama and one is Trump. These fellas did a survey. And he tell the people and them, they say, the one on the left is Obama. The one on the right is Trump. Obama's inauguration had more people than Trump on. And when they ask the people who look at the pictures, they say that is a lie. Right? The, the, the photograph of Trump's inauguration is a lie with a little bit of people. They wasn't there in the survey they did, and they, and they wasn't there. But they believe it's a lie. Right? They believe. And they believe it's a lie. You are seeing evidence. You know of the evidence. We were there. But they didn't decide in their heart, and their heart has not been, uh, it, it was not established in their heart. 
So what I want to say, make sure that the truth is established in your heart before you trust your eyes. Because if your eye is dim and your eye is cloudy and your eye is dark, your entire body is going to be dark. What Jesus was saying there, because right after speaking about your heart and out of the abundance of your heart, he spoke about the eyes. And Jesus always do things in, in sequence and he knows what he's doing. So he, he wanted you now to establish your heart. He spoke about the heart and then he spoke about the eyes. There is two areas of deception or two areas that could cause us to be deceived. You don't establish with your eye first and then believe, which is what the world is doing now. The world established with their eyes, this is what I see, right? And that's what I see. So they believe what they see. But God is telling you, and Jesus himself said, believe in your heart first so that you would not be deceived by your sight. Be careful. Listen to your heart. We'll see you on Wednesday, please, God, for times of refreshing where Sarah and I have a Bible discussion. Um, we have been having some um, very deep uh, revelation lately. Some of the things we, we have been speaking about, I myself have to look back at the, um, at the, at the broadcast. To, to, to hear what the Holy Spirit was saying, because some of the things that have been said, I, I, I didn't plan to say. Sarah herself said that she has been blessed. People have been saying that, that um, they are blessed by the Wednesday um, discussion. Times are refreshing. Next week, Sunday morning, please God, we expect to see Sarah here, um, where we will celebrate communion with her. She's the head of scholarship at ministries, the main preacher. And I just had to beg for a little blight now and then, so I had to call her. See, wait, wait, do you, um, you have anything, any message for Sunday? She said, no. And when she said, no, I said, okay, I have one. So I kind of choke in a little good word for myself now. So I want to say um, thank you for listening. Um, stay blessed. Guard your heart. Don't trust your eyes. Trust your heart. Right? Because that is where the Holy Spirit is for those of you who are born again. For those of you who don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, get with the program because we live in perilous times. And you cannot be out there. Every day you pick up the papers, two, three people getting shoot. They strip two fellas and shoot them. They can identify them. They kill two dong and Chagaramas. They still can identify them. I don't know what devil Roman Trinidad and Tobago, but I could tell you. Because you don't know what's going on here now. We ain't know. They can't say if, 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 it's, if it's gang related, if it's a hit the put on people, if it's. Um, if, if it's family issues, land is whatever it's about, people just getting killed left, right, and center. And you don't want to die and get to paradise and you are underdeveloped and you remain there. Make sure. Make sure that your God, you could fit into the gong that God will prepare for you in paradise. Make sure you could fit in your gong. Make sure when you get to paradise, you're fully developed. And the place to do it is here and now. Okay? So... Be blessed. Heavenly Father, we want to thank you for your presence here. We want to thank you for the presence of your Holy Spirit. Lord Jesus, I want to thank you for your word, which is, 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 is spirit and is truth. And this morning, as we, as we close this service, oh God, we ask you to take us safely back to our home. We pray that those of us who are going to um, partake of other activities, that you keep us safe, you watch over us, and you give us your grace and your strength. We pray, oh God, that you keep us during um, um, this week. Until next week, we pray, O oh God, that your Holy Spirit continue to guide us, to, uh, to, to, to help us and to, uh, and to teach us how to guard our heart so that the treasures of our heart are going to be good and that then we will speak life and we will speak abundance into the lives of other people. We thank you and we give you all the honor and all the praise. And let the whole church say, Amen. Thank you and bye for now.